As for the Kiribati people, most of them don't know that this kind of issue is existing. Because, for example, if they receive the call from overseas, they keep on re receiving that call from that number, their known number from their contact. They didn't report that um, because they don't know that that's an issue. PNG also experienced a number hijack where its country code 675 was hijacked. But they called for, to access the service, never terminate in PNG. Just come to our international level and then seamlessly, seamlessly terminate in the Asia country. From my perspective, number misappropriation has probably been going on for a long time. I think the biggest issue is there's been a lack of knowledge of the activities, particularly at the regulator level, uh, and a lack of knowledge of actually what do we actually do about it and how can we go about trying to curtail this particular activity. In one way or another, will get affected because this foreigner would not stop. Once they, they see it's a bit hot to operate in the Pacific Islands, then they'll start operating in other country now. So it'll get around to every region. So I think if we do a global act together, uh, that would be a good uh, platform to, to set. Number misuse can have deep economic, social and trade implications. In collaboration with our neighbouring Pacific Island countries, We've worked closely with the ITU to raise awareness and build capacity to combat this issue. This project is expected to result in real benefits for island countries and improve telephone numbering management practices. Progress to date has seen increased sharing of information between the nations and the development of best practice guidelines. And these will enable us to counter misappropriation Australia is now looking at ways to share the outcomes of this project within the ITU so that others may learn from and build on the work. <laughs>